Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Moroccan Tile Crochet Afghan. Today I'm going to show you all the different motifs that are involved in making this. So today it's recommending that you use Yarnspirations Bernat Velvet Yarn. So you can see it's nice and fluffy. As an experienced crocheter you'll be able to feel where all the stitches are and you can actually pretty much see it as well. But here on camera just because of the, the quality I'm going to be switching off with Karen One Pound today just to make sure that you understand where all the stitches are playing today. So it's asking you to do a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook using Bernat Velvet but with me with using Karen One Pound you're going to see a six millimeter size J hook instead. So let's talk about all the different uh, motifs that we're going to be making today and then I'm gonna also show you how to put these together. On page number three there are four different diagrams because there's four different motifs. So we have the solid here it's called the OG motif and then what you have here is this one is a half so you can see it's showing just one half of it. This one is the long half so it's just showing one side of it here and this one is a quarter so it's just a piece of the quarter. So what we have is that that's what's gonna be making up this particular afghan. Let's take a quicker look at this because if you'd like to change your sizes it will change the number of motifs you're going to need. So on page number three there's a diagram of the afghan laying flat. I'm only gonna do a small section in a corner. The reason for it is that I can demonstrate all the different types that you'll need and still have a finished look. The difference is that if you'd like to do the same you can change the sizes really quite easily. In this particular diagram you can see that there's actually technically only four quarters. So one, two, three and four. So they're only on a very corner of your project. And then you can see and count how many halves that you have that are long halves and then how many are literally short halves. So the short halves then would be on the edge when you're coming down here. So it actually is really quite easy. Now to put these together I know what you're thinking you're gonna have to sew. Absolutely not. There's no sewing involved with this. We're gonna be single crocheting these together and I'm gonna be uh, showing you a quick little sample and finishing this little sample that I've done here in the corner here on camera. So let me show you that sample first and then I'm gonna take you through all of the different motifs in order to, for you to be successful today. So here on camera is an example. So I've done my homework in advance to make sure I understood the pattern so that I could get a rectangular formation so I can show you how to do the border on this. The border is literally just one round. So what we have here is that you can see that you have the, the short half, you have a quarter, you have the full and then you have a long half. So you can see by putting it together that you can keep your edges nice and straight. So what these are here is it actually being single crocheted together. So you just kind of fold them together and you single crochet these so it's a nice raised up ridge that matches the color of the interior. And when you're doing it you can see that you're just gonna follow it down and you'll see that when you do another one it just follows. Now when you're using Bernat uh, Velvet you're going to see that it really it looks amazing when it's not that this doesn't look amazing but it really looks amazing because of all the fluffiness of the yarn and it really does look cool. So what's gonna happen is that once we get here we're just going to puzzle up another one right in. Sorry this one is gonna be a half. So what's gonna happen is that we get our half and then we puzzle it just like you see. And so you're thinking it's not gonna work. It does work. So you just gotta single crochet them into position and you will see that you'll have a nice awesome opportunity uh, to be able to make things work. So today what we're going to do is that I'm gonna demonstrate how to do all the different motifs. I'll give you the counts for those and again if you'd like to change the size that's completely up to you. So I'm only gonna show this diagram just one time and I'm just gonna take you through it. So what's gonna happen is that we are gonna chain a total of eight and then make it a circle chain up three and then we're going to put three double crochets that are separated by chain twos as we do round number one. We're then going to move up to round number two, change your color, start off up here. So it says, shows you that you're slip stitching. You'd only need to slip stitch if you're gonna keep the same color but if you're not gonna slip stitch you just start off right here and then begin. So what you wanna pay attention to I guess the most is that you wanna pay attention to this chain one space because it's only existing after the edge and then there's five double crochets in each of these chain twos and then the chain one space happens again as you're coming around. Eventually you'll come into round number three. We're gonna start up. This is kind of interesting right? So I haven't seen that done before. So we're gonna do that. It has its purpose and it makes it look finished, more finished. We're then going to continue around and it's really quite easy. So let's uh, begin and this is considered I believe an expert level um, crochet project I believe. Uh, let me just double check that. It's an intermediate level so I can completely understand where that's coming from as there's a bit more work than normal from an easy level. Let's begin to do the large 
OG motif. So with your Bernat Velvet yarn it's recommending a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook. I'm using a six millimeter size J with Karen one pound and we're gonna start off with the slip knot. So we're going to chain a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Once you have your eight join it to the first one with a slip stitch to form a really large center ring. And let's begin round number one. So round number one you want to chain three and that counts as a double crochet and put more two more double crochets in the ring. This is the straggler just put it around the ring so it gets stuck underneath so you don't have to worry about sewing that in later. Less sewing for this project equals faster. So there is technically three double crochets together as into the ring. Separate it by a chain two and then put three more double crochets in there. Your goal is is to get six sets of three double crochets together like that. Okay so they're working together. Okay chain two, three double crochets together again. And when I say together I don't mean to uh, do a reduction stitch. I'm just saying that they're grouped together in sets of three. So chain two, again three double crochets. Okay chain two, three double crochet. And then finally that's the fifth one. Just chain, if it, you're running out of space just move it and chain two and do the last one in there. One, two, and three. Now you're not quite done. Remember that they have chain twos that separate those groups so make sure you chain two first and then slip stitch it to the top of the first one. There, uh, be very careful to make sure that you do get your six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six groups of three. I want you to cut your yarn. If you don't wanna change your colors as often and that's completely up to you. It does show you how to slip stitch in the diagram. Just weave this in and cut it long enough so that you can get beyond the one and go into the second uh, gapping space. It just has more security for you. If you cut it too short it can fall out a lot more easier. So go right into that second area. So what I would recommend you do is do all of your round number ones first and then come back and then continue into round number two and three at the same time using the same colors and just get rid of your yarn strands and we're going to move on to round number two and three next. So let's start off in round number two. I'm gonna create a slip knot first and choose any chain two space to be able to go start. And I want you to just insert your hook in and then just slip stitch it just to fasten on. Leave this down on top of it so that you can bury it as you go. So chain up three counts as one of your double crochets and double crochet into this chain two space going up over top of that. And then it'll get stuck underneath and you don't have to worry about sewing it. So with the chain three in these two that gives you a total number three. Now this is a point so you're gonna chain two and in the same space I want you to put three more double crochets in. So one, two, and three. Okay, so now we got our point in. This one here only we chain one and then we jump to the next chain two space. So the next space and the next one are both the same and they're both five double crochets each. So let's count these. So we have one, two, three, four and five. There is no chaining between them just immediately jump to the next one and put another five in there. So one, two, three, four and five. Now the next one is technically going to be your next um, um, top or bottom depending on which way you got it turned but you're gonna chain one first and then start. So you only chain one after the two groups of five and before the two groups of five. If you can remember that it's just easier. So now you're gonna put three double crochets in the next chain two space. So this is the peak of your OG motif. Chain two and then put three more double crochets in that same space. So what happens on one side happens on the other. So we're just gonna repeat what we just did but on this side. So chain one to start and then the next two are each gonna be five double crochets. So we have one, 
two, three, four, and five. Now the next one is also uh, five double crochets but there's no chaining so just immediately just start and put five double crochets into that one. There we go. Now you're not quite done. You have to chain one first then join it to the beginning chain three. And then round two is technically done. So to start round number three we are going to slip stitch to the next chain two space which is the point. So let's just glide along. So one, two and the third one is in the chain two space and let's begin the final round number three. Let's begin number three. We're gonna start, we're still in the point so we're going to chain up three counts as a double crochet and put two more double crochets in to that same one. So here's something unique that I've not seen done before. So we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and we're going to double crochet into the fourth one away. So just wrap the hook and double crochet into the fourth chain away and just do that. Now coming back into the same point I want you to put three more double crochets. So one, two and three. So the points are always gonna be done the same way uh, when it comes to this particular motif. So you'll have your three double crochets, you'll have your chaining of four and double crocheting back across and then three back in. We're now going to come to the next chain one space. Just jump there and just put in three double crochets. So one, two and three. Now you can count the number of half double crochets it takes but you remember that there's five and five so that means that there's ten but what you wanna do is stop on the last half double crochet and the next one after it we're gonna put three double crochets like we just did here on this one. So we're going to half double crochet ourselves all the way to that spot to the space and there's a total of ten. I'm not gonna count because I have already counted my fives and I know that my stitch count is right. So you don't have to worry about excessively counting you just have to look for it. Okay, so I'm coming up to the last one now. So my next one is the chain one space. So there's gonna be three double crochets there. So one, two and three. So the next one is the actual point. So let's start it off. We're gonna put three double crochets first. So one, two, three. Now let's do that fancy footwork at the top. So you chain four. So one, two, three, four and double crochet in the fourth chain away. And then come back into that same space and put in three more double crochet. So one, two and three. Come to the next uh, chain one space. Start it off with three double crochets. So one, two and three. And now the next two groups of five, they're each gonna be a half double crochet and I'm looking for this chain one space for when I start changing it back to a double crochet. So half double crochet, ten in a row or just look for the stitches. Once you get your ten there, the next one is the chain one space. So there's gonna be three double crochets. So one, two and three and you're technically done. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and that is that motif completely done. So you just gotta just push it down and it will flatten out. So you wanna get rid of this particular yarn strand. So just cut it and you're going to weave it into your work so just weave it around these stitches and just leave it sit for now and what you want to do is you wanna get your total of 98 of these done if you're doing the exact same size. Um, your motif will appear to be bigger because you're using uh, Bernat Velvet yarn and also a larger size hook so they're not as small as they appear here on camera. So once you get that done then that is the large uh, uh, OG motif. It's the full one and that's what it will look like 
at this point. So let's move along and we're going to do the short half next. So let's move along. We're going to do the short half OG motif. You can see that it's just a middle section here and we're going to do that. You need a total of 14 of these to make that particular afghan size. Again if you're improvising just change the number that you need. So let's begin and we're going to start off. We're only gonna chain five this time and it's gonna be very quick. So instead of going and doing a full one you'll notice this is half the work therefore it's half the time pretty much. You're going to do round uh, row number one as the same color as the middle of this one and then row number two and three. You're going to notice you're gonna go back and forth on this with the Bernat Velvet. It's gonna be hardly noticeable. Um, you may notice the difference uh, when you're using uh, Karen one pound because you are gonna be doing on the wrong side for just one uh, row but um, honestly it still looks amazing regardless. So let's begin to do the short half OG next. Okay let's begin to do the short half OG. We're going to start off with a slip knot and we're going to chain only five. So you remember the big one was chaining of eight but because this is half it's only five. So let's begin. So one, two, three, four and five. Insert the hook into the beginning chain and form a ring. So yarning over pulling it through to form the center ring. Lay down the straggler on top of the line so that you can bury it underneath. Let's begin round, uh, row number one. You're going to chain a total of five which counts as a double crochet and chain two space. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet. Four and five is your chain two space. You can't see it yet but that's what it is. So coming back into the center of the ring I want you to place in three double crochets in a row. So one, two and three and then chain two one and two and back into that center again for three more double crochets. So one, two and three but you're not done yet. You're gonna chain two and then double crochet one last time into the center of that ring. So just that's it. So what you wanna do is take care of your loose ends now. It's just easier. Cut your strand and just weave it in to your project. I, set, I recommend that you don't necessarily cut those right away. I recommend that you just kind of wait a bit so that you remember uh, where you need to start then for round number two. So if you're gonna do all 14 of these at the same time it's just easier to know that. But you can probably get rid of the starting strand right away if you buried it underneath. So we're going to turn our work and we're now going to do row number two with the other gold color. So let's start off with the slip knot and we're going to begin to do row number two. So we're gonna come into the top of the first uh, last double crochet that you did and you were going to do a total chain of three. So just slip stitch it to join and then one, two, three. Keeping this straggler down on top I want you in the chain two space I want you to place in four more double crochets. So one, two. Noticing how that I'm going up over top of that yellow straggler so I can hide that in a position underneath the stitch work. So there's gonna be a total of four in there. So with the first chain three in the in the double crochet and those four that gives you a five. Okay, sometimes easier to remember it like that. Chain up one and now you're gonna come to the next chain two space right here. So that's just the very point and you're going to put in three double crochet so one, two, three and then chain two and then in the same spot put in three more. So there is your point happening. And then chain one and then in the last chain two space, remember this chain three and our chain five counted as a double crochet and chain two space. So right in the space put in five double crochets. So one, two, three, four and five. And that was round number, uh, sorry that was row number two. Turn our work and let's begin the final round or the final row. So you're gonna chain up two and that counts as the first half double crochet and I want you to half double crochet the remaining of these double crochets that you see. There's a total of four in a row. So one, two, three and four. In this chain space, remember what we did before? We put in three double crochets. 
So one, two, and three. And then we reach over to the next chain two space which is the very corner and we're going to start with three double crochet. So one, two, three. And then we're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three, four and double crochet in the fourth one away. It'll make sense when you're joining these while you're doing that. And then you're gonna come back into that same space and put three more double crochets. So that will complete that point. So you're coming back to the other side here. The next chain space here you're going to put in three double crochets first. So one, two, three and then the final five that you have here is each one half double crochet. So one, two, three, four and five. That's it. So this is the the half uh, OG motif and you wanna just trim your yarn. You wanna get rid of any of the stragglers that you see. Have it nice and clean and ready for you and you need a total of 14 of these. Just weave these into the edge for now and then um, you can pretty much uh, double or crochet over them when you're going to join them. There is no sewing involved with these ones so you don't have to worry about that so much. So this is doing the half OG. This is the short half to doing this and it's really quite not a hard thing to do. It's just there's quite a few of them. So there's a total of 14 of those and then you're good to go. So that's what we can do for now. So let's move along and let's learn another type of motif. So back on the diagram we're going to learn another motif and this is gonna be the long half OG motif. So we're gonna work in the long ways and again really not hard. What you will notice though is that you're gonna be half double crochets in the third chain away when you see that and that's one thing that we need to watch that is different from the big one. Let's begin doing the long half. So let's start off with the slip knot and let's do the long half OG and we are going to put in a total of six chains. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Insert the hook into the beginning and yarning over pulling it through to form the center ring like you have with the others. Let the straggler fall around so that you can bury that underneath for row number one. You are going to chain a total of three. So one, two, three and then you're gonna put three more double crochets in there. The same ring. So one, two and three. So with the chaining of three and these three that gives you a total count of four. That's important. So now let's chain two and we're gonna put three more double crochets uh, side by side here as we continue. So three in a row. And then we're going to chain two and the very final we're gonna put four double crochets in there. So one two, three and four and then that's it for that color. So you need a total of 12 of these on and all if I haven't said that already which I don't think I did. So you wanna get rid of your loose ends at this time. You want to get rid of this blue so just cut it and then just weave this in. I wouldn't necessarily cut this right away so that you know where it is and I'd recommend that you get all of these centers done then. There's a total of 12 of them and then come back and then do uh, rows number two and three um, at the same time because it's just easier for memory and it's quicker if you have to look at your pattern far less. So let's turn our work and let's begin then row number two. So let's start off with a slip knot and let's begin doing row number two and three. So coming up to the first one here, the first uh, double crochet, you want to just join it with a slip stitch and I'm recommending that you go right up over top of the straggler to trap it so that you don't have to sew it in later and chain three. So one, two and three. In the same one that you did the join I want you to place in three more double crochets. So we have one, two and three. Now I want you to chain one and in the next chain space I want you to put five double crochets into that one and into the next one. So two in a row. So put five in there. So one, two, 
three, four, and five. And then immediately just jump to the next chain two space and put five into that one. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. But we're not quite done. We're gonna chain one now and then in the very last turning chain here you are going to put in four double crochets. Don't go to a space. Go right into the chain and put four double crochet in. So we have one, two, three, and four. So that was uh, uh, row number two. Let's turn our work and finally do row number three. In row number three we are gonna chain a total of six. So one, two, three, and then go four and pinch on the fourth because it's just easier and then five and six. Right where I pinched on the fourth one is your first half double crochet. So wrap the hook, slide your thumb out of the way and just put in a half double crochet in that particular chain. Okay, so if you need to reverse me on how I just did that, just do that right now. In the same one that you just came out of, you need to put in three more double crochet. So we have one, two and three. Okay, so there is the top point. So you're gonna come to the next chain space and you're gonna put in three double crochet. So one, two and three. Now here's the thing. These five in a row that you see, so you see five and five, they're each a half double crochet each. So you can either count and say and count ten of them out or just look at it and just put in five um, half double crochets in a row for each of those shells that you see. I find, I'm a believer if you know what to look for and less counting you can just kind of look away and watch TV without really having to concentrate too hard. So I did those. Now your next chain one space you're going to put in three half double crochet or three double crochets. So one, two, and three. But we're not quite done. We're gonna come immediately to the last chain, uh, turning chain here, the last one and you're gonna finish it. So you're gonna just go right into it. Don't go into a space. Go into a chain and put in three double crochets first. So one, two, and three. But you're not done. You now need to um, do um, that special thing at the top. So you're gonna chain only three this time. So one, two, three and put a half double crochet in the third one. So wrap the hook, go into the third and just do a, a half double crochet into that one. And then finally to finish one double crochet back into where the other three are and then you're done. Okay, so you see how you finish that. So everything is gonna line up to the other uh, OG motifs. You can just simply trim off all the yarn that you were burying as you went and your very final one just trim it off and just bury it in and then you're gonna be able to have a good time. So this is how you do the long half. Uh, we still have to cover just the quarter uh, one which is the last one here on tutorial format and then I'm gonna show you how to put these together and then just quickly review the border with you because I already have a sample ready to go. So finally we're going to do the quarter OG motif. These are even faster. It's just a small section and then just a little bit and we're gonna be doing that. You only need four of those. Those are only ever used on a corner uh, that you have. So there's only four corners to this. So you only need four of these. So let's begin to do that next. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot. Only four of these. These are the quarter OG motifs. We're going to only chain four. So one, two, three and four and just go into the beginning one and just pull the yarn through to form the center ring. Leave the straggler down on top of it so you can bury it as you go. So now we want to chain a total of five which is one double crochet and chain two. That's what it counts as. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet. Four, five is your chain two space. In the center you want to place in three double crochets in a row. So we have one, two, and three. And then finally we're just immediately going to chain two and then double crochet into that center ring one last time. It's only a quarter so there's not a lot to do. 
So once you get that done, you bury it in your straggler. You saw me do it. You can get rid of that and then you can just trim your other, uh, other yarn and just weave it into your project. So we're going to move up then to rows number two and three using the other main color that we have been using. So let's begin to do that next. Let's begin to do row number two. So we're gonna come in to the very top of the first uh, double crochet. So turn your work. Okay, so this was where we were. So turn it. Come into the very top of the first double crochet and join it with the slip stitch to fasten on and then chain a total of three. So one, two, three. In the chain two space that you have here, or what you want to do is place in uh, three more double crochets. Go right up over top of the gold so that you can bury that underneath. So we have one, two, and three. Now you're going to chain up one and in the next chain two space that you see here is going to be four uh, double crochets. So one, two, three, and four. And that's it. So now we're just gonna turn our work and do the final, uh, the final. We're gonna chain two which counts as a half double crochet and we're gonna half double crochet the other uh, four of these that are left of the double crochet. So just half double crochet a total of three times. So one, two, and three. In the next uh, space here put in three double crochets. So one, two, and three. And now we're just gonna create the point up here. So what we need to do in the final uh, turning chain here you want not a space but right into the chain I want you to double crochet three times. So one, two, and three. Followed by you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and you're going to come and do a double crochet in the third chain away. So wrap the hook, third chain away, do a double crochet and then right where you have the other three put in one double crochet and you're done. So there is your quarter. And I know you're thinking that doesn't kinda look right. It'll work out. It really will. So you just gotta be patient with it. So get rid of any of your yarn strands at this time. You only need four of these to complete your corners. Um, you may wanna do these right away. It's up to you. It just uh, might be something uh, just to get it done and over with. So just weave in your ends and we're going to cover assembly so we're now going to cover the assembly. So it shows you in a black line that you're just following the seam line. So every one of these that you just follow up. So you just start on the same side and you keep working your way. So you just continue to do the other side and you continue to join. So you want all of these to have the right side facing up so that you can do that so that it looks awesome. So you wanna pay attention to, especially with the, the uh, full motif just like you see is that you wanna make sure that the right side's facing up and you can see a visual difference. So what we have is that we want to put the these together so that the stitches line up with each other. Things that you wanna watch for, for when I did my sample is you wanna watch for these groups of five. So right pretty much in half is right where the one will stop as it comes here and then the other one will pick up as we go. So that there's no two stitches that overlap with the same motif when it comes to joining. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you with my sample and what how you are to join it and then you just work your way across in order to make that happen. So here's my sample and what I've done is that I've taught myself on how to do it. I'm essentially just matching stitches together. So the stitch counts work out to be exactly what you have. What you wanna pay attention to is that these groups of five, it kinda gives you a good indication. One group of five will only work into one section and then as soon as it goes into the other, you'll jump into the other. So there's no two stitches on one that will share the same stitch on this. So what's gonna happen is that eventually you're just gonna keep working your way across. So when you start your one edge you'll have your flats and you'll just uh, put two together and you'll just match it and follow it. Then you'll move down and then you'll start attaching the next ones in order to go all the way down. Of course it's gonna be a lot longer. So what you wanna do is just kinda put them together and put the right sides facing up and then match the stitches. So let's see if we know how to do this. So I'm a big believer of not having too many yarn strands. So we're going to start off and I want to start off with a slip knot first. And I wanna do a standing single crochet. So you're gonna come into the very first top one here. Okay, so you see that there's kinda two. And that'll be the first stitch that matches to this one here. So I'm just going to match it and coming up underneath. 
Okay, so it's kind of like the wrong sides are face are, are together sandwiched. And to do a standing st uh, single crochet, it doesn't say to do this, but I'm telling you it could it could be a good idea. Just wrap the hook and pull through, but don't pull through the first loop. Let me try that again. And you'll have two loops on your hook, pull through all two. That's a standing single crochet. So now you want to advance to the next stitch on this one and to the next stitch on the back one. Now this is the straggler so leave it down on top so that it gets stuck in the middle and it's underneath the stitch. So you just match and match. I would leave that straggler in there for about at least a good two inches and you won't see it anyway. So just match and match. So my goal is, is by the time I get to this one here, I will be finished just if you look at it from a five double crochet perspective, it'll be around, roughly around there. Because it's a Bernat Velvet yarn, you can kind of fake it too if you have to. If you're off by one or whatever, um, it's not a really a deal breaker with this one. Even with the Karen One Pounder, you probably can get away with a lot of things. So you're just matching the stitches together. So as soon as you're done with one motif, you just immediately jump to the next as you sandwich it. So I can see that I'm pretty much almost got just two stitches left here and on the back here I've got two here as well. So everything's kind of working out just perfectly. And then just come to the next one and just immediately jump to the next motif. So it's this one here. So you're never jumping into this one. You're always just staying on the outside of the, the party really. I know I don't even know if that analogy makes sense but Okay, so you're just matching the stitches together. So you just have to move all the way down and as soon as you're finished this motif, then you just add another one to it. So you just add another full one when you get there and you just jump from one to the other. So let me uh, just speed up and I will show you what that looks like. So as soon as you're ready on the last one here, you just grab another one up and just immediately jump to the next one. So just starting on the edge and just go into the next available stitch and put together and just work away down that one. So you wanna continue to do that all the way down so that you're matching things together and whether it's a full OG or a half or a quarter, it doesn't matter. You just have to match the stitches and if you don't want any flat edges, then don't do any flat edges. Just keep it nice and it will still probably look just as cool. So um, a lot of people really like their afghans to have um, flat edges um, it's a preferred thing so they have that as an option. So just follow it all the way down and then I'll see you at the end of this at the bottom. Okay, once you get to your very finals, then what you just have to do is just finish it off and just um, weave in your ends at the end. Just keep it within the blue because it'll look obvious if you try to weave it in with the yellow. And then what you wanna do is just keep moving along and just keep attaching. And then eventually you'll come to the other side and then you will use your half uh, OGs to fill in the very halves and you'll use your quarters then to fill in the corners up at the tops that you'll see and then you'll have a nice flat edge once again. I'm gonna do that here off camera and then I'm gonna show you quickly on how the border is done. Okay, so here's what it looks like before we do any kind of bordering or edging. So what we have at this point is that we are gonna go all the way around with just one single crochet um, except for the corners that we're going to apply two single crochets, chain two, two single crochets. But we're gonna equally space it because there's really no stitch work to work with. Okay, so you gotta equally space that. We're then going to, along the bottom edging, we're gonna add two more rows and you can see that in the photo uh, that we're gonna have that on the very edge. So let's just uh, pick a, a corner and we're going to use the same color that does these um, um, raised up look. It's the center colors of your OGs and we're gonna start off with this very center. So your goal is is to just equally space the stitches in. So just start out right in the corner and you're just gonna chain a total of one and then put two single crochets in first. So one and two and then just chain two and then I put two more single crochets in there. So your first corner is technically done. So you're just gonna move your way down and you're just gonna equally space. Now don't go into an absolute just gap space. Just always stick to a chain section of your edge and just 
go forward. If you see the afghan starting to buckle up like turning in it means that you're being too quick and if it is ruffling out um, like really ruffling out then it means that you're adding too many too quickly at, uh, like too closely to each other. So in it with experience like I am I can pretty much do it the first time but you just may have to to play with it to make sure that you're getting it to look as even as possible and you can see it's looking pretty good. So go all the way around and then corners don't forget you're going to apply a uh, chained uh, single two single crochets chain two uh, two single crochets on your corner. So please do that all the way. So I'm now just coming all the way around I've equally spaced out my stitches and now I'm just going to join it to the top of the first single crochet and I'm just gonna use a slip stitch. Now the, what we're going to do now for the, both sides and I'm gonna show it to you once is that we're just gonna do two rows along the base of this particular afghan and then that will then conclude that and you'll do the same thing on both sides. So I'll show it to you on one side. So just finish off this weave in your ends and then we're gonna start on the wrong side first. So you need to flip your afghan upside down and to start the first row and, it, and remember it's on the long edge only. Okay, or sorry it's on the short edge right where you see. So let's flip it over and let's do row number one and let's begin. So let's finish it off. We are going to turn it over which I already have and so you can see the nice fancy footwork is on the other side of this. You're gonna go into the chain two space in the corner and attach your yarn using a slip stitch and you're just gonna pull through chain one and put two single crochets in that same chain two space. Now really so simple. You're just gonna work your way down the row and apply one single crochet into each stitch that you hit and then you'll come to the other side. So what I'll do is that I will leave that with you and then I'll see you on the other side of this and we'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm now just coming into the corner and in the, the final chain two space you're going to apply two single crochets and then you're going to turn your project. So you're not turning it going down the sideways. You're gonna just turn it over and go along the base. So to do the final one here we're just going to chain up one and do one single crochet into each all the way to the other side and then therefore you're done. Now you can apply the tassels that it shows you on the pattern. We have uh, tutorials available for you if you'd like to learn how to do tassels or you can leave the tassels off. You know it all depends on your personal interest and what you like in a project and what you don't. So I'll see you at the end of this and then we'll recap and then that's it for today's tutorial. So I'm coming into my last stitch and you're just gonna finish and that's it for today. So just uh, fasten off. I'm going to show you how to weave in your ends just in case you haven't done so already. Uh, you know you should have <laughs> you know I teach this right at the end of the tutorial. How does that make any sense? So if you ever have to weave in your ends and you don't want any of the tails to fall out the first thing that you need to do is to find your tapestry needle. So I'm just going to put it in. So what you wanna do is not impede the edge of your project but just sink it down inside and turn it to the back side of the project so that you can favor the back side and just glide it along. So the secret answer is three. So if you can glide it in and out of your project three times and when you pull it in to make sure it doesn't like warp your project. Go back in a second time in the opposite direction and then finally go third time as a charm back towards you. There you go. And if you go back and forth three times it will never fall out because your project can never stretch in three different directions at one time. So then you can cut it right slave to the project. So this is how you do the Moroccan tile uh, afghan. It's actually really neat and you can apply the tassels if you want to and again if this is done in Bernat velvet yarn like I showed at the very beginning of this tutorial it will look completely different. So this is really neat and on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd have a great day. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye. <music>